Andrew Dye here, Unity Homes, on the site of a Xyla-style home in way northern Vermont. I'm here on a blustery June morning. We're going to take a walk around the outside and then tour through the inside. This house is built on a slab foundation. You can see some of the cutting that was done toward the back of the house there with the topsoil piled up, and then there was a bunch of filling that was done here on the lower side of the grade to create a flat spot for the slab foundation for this house. The various components, the design components that make up the house, sort of starting from the right, we've got a screen porch that will be finished with panels. Um, this component that's facing us here is the primary bedroom wing, which comes off from the main core of the Xyla, which is in the background. This main part of the house is connected to the garage via this connector within entry porch. Unity is providing a tempo package, which includes the shell of the house, which our crew assembled on site as well as many of the finished materials that will go into the house and on the outside of the house. The local builder, Daniel Pryor of Kaiser Homes, has this storage container on site for some of those tempo materials and for some tools. You can see that the roof trim and the roofing are installed. We encourage local builders to jump right on that as soon as our crew has assembled the shell on site. And you can see the photovoltaic panels that have already been installed on this south-facing roof of the Xyla. This is where the line sets are coming through for a ground-mounted air source heat pump compressor unit that will be toward the south side of the garage here, and those lines run to a wall unit inside that's in the kitchen. We, we didn't create a penetration here for these line sets because this is an uninsulated garage wall. There's a hose bib for which we would have created a penetration in the shop. And there's an outside outlet and some wall sconce locations again where we would have created penetrations in the shop that would have been based on the locations of those fixtures in the 3D model. You can see the door buck that we've talked about in other videos which allows us to pre-install a double door like this in the wall panels in the shop and there would have been a recess in the slab formed into the slab to accommodate that door buck at the bottom of these double doors. Here's the view from the west side of the house, the southwest corner of the house, showing that screen porch. The uh, timbers and the roof framing are part of the shell package, and then we provide panels that will finish the screen porch as part of the tempo package. Those windows up high in the gable end are in the vaulted living space and in the loft area as you'll see on the inside. Just a quick shot of the underside of the screen porch showing that the roof framing is roof trusses, conventional trusses, and those will get finished by the local contractor with ceiling boards that we've provided as part of the tempo package. But this was kind of fun too. Uh, starling nest, I don't know if you can see those little starlings up there in that nest. Um, the owner said these are actually the first residents of the house. <laughs> And adjacent to the screen porch, there's going to be another ground-mounted compressor unit for the air source heat pump. You can see the line sets for that unit coming out here next to that hose bib. Just note the roof detail here, the roof trim detail. When we have intersecting roofs like this, because we have plum rakes and angled fascias, uh, we don't try to connect them, but we have one land on top of the other. And here's the gable end of that primary bedroom suite. All right, let's go inside. The entry porch, uh, there's a temporary construction door that's been installed here. That'll be replaced with the main door later on in construction. But this door here is a finished door that we pre-installed in the shop. Let's take just a quick look in the garage here. Um, as you can see, it's quite filled with green porch components and finished flooring and trim and cabinets and all kinds of stuff. So it's great to have this space for storing all these tempo materials. They're on site now for the builder when he needs them. And in fact, there's a drop down stair here that goes up to storage space above the garage. These are garage storage trusses for the roof. And there's some more materials, things like plumbing fixtures and electrical fixtures and hardware up in the loft area. 
And uh, one thing to note, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, a wire in there coming off the wall. That's going to be for an electric vehicle charger. So between the photovoltaic panels and the batteries that you'll see inside and this electric vehicle charger and the EV, the electric vehicle that the owners already have, uh, they're going to be driving around on sunshine for much of the time. Okay, now we'll head into the house. So here we are in the connector. We'll uh, start with the mechanical room. It's always my favorite room in the house. Uh, you can see that's a hybrid heat pump water heater in the back left corner. So that uses the same heat pump technology that's actually creating heating and cooling for the inside spaces, but that's actually doing it for the domestic hot water for the sinks and the showers. This is a good location for it here in the connector because it can, it tends to cool down the spaces where it's operating. And so this keeps it away from the primary living area. There's some uh, well equipment there, an expansion tank and filtration. And then we've got inverters here for the end phase photovoltaic system. These are inverters and the primary electric panels here. And in these cardboard boxes are actually uh, there for the battery system, the house battery system by Enphase. And because there's not room for them here in this mechanical space, they're actually going to go in this office space. So this is a home office space that's part of the connector. See, it's got the nice roof boards installed and uh, they're going to go up high here on a shelf to get them out of the way off the floor, but that way they'll be adjacent to the inverters. That seems to be a good solution for these batteries. So that's a, a home office space, kind of a multi-purpose space, kind of a his space. And here we are in the mudroom connector. To note here is that we didn't pre-install ceiling boards in this space because the plans called for it to have a flat ceiling, but in fact, the owners like the vaulted space, and so they are going to put finished boards on here and leave it vaulted. And that means that these line sets for the mini split heating system that run from the back of the garage over to the kitchen are just going to be soffited in. So there will be some trim that covers those things. And uh, similarly, there are condensate pipes and some wires that are running from the main part of the house over to this mechanical room, and those will get a soffit as well to hide them. All right, moving into the main volume of this Xyla. This is the Xyla style that has the vaulted space longitudinally. So we call this sort of an eave side vaulted space as opposed to the gable end vaulted space. Let's see if we can come in here and get a better look at what's going on. The tapers are just finishing the sheetrock and it's looking good. It's nice and clean here. So, that corner is going to be the kitchen, L-shaped kitchen. You can see the penetration up high for the range hood. You can see the rough-in for the wall unit, the wall cassette that's part of the heat pump system for heating and cooling. You can see the, the wiring for appliances and things, outlets, and here conduit was run under the slab for wiring for an outlet that will be in the island, the kitchen island. And then there's some plumbing over here for the sink that will be under these windows. We've got these nice double doors that will go out on the south side. And then the living area over here at this end of the vaulted space. That alcove is actually going to be for firewood and then there will be a wood stove installed to the right of that. And we tend to sound some cautionary notes when it comes to wood stoves in our super tight houses, but uh, it can be done, certainly. Uh, this door goes out to the screen porch that we saw from the outside. There are those windows up high. You'll notice that there are ceiling boards installed in part of the loft area, but not in the entire loft area. And that's because this section that doesn't have the ceiling boards was originally intended to be closed off as storage space and mechanical space. But when the builder and the client saw how nice that space was and how nice this space was with the ceiling boards, they decided to extend the scope of the loft over because the, the heat recovery ventilation system, the fresh air system that was to be up there is still up there, but it really doesn't need a lot of space. And so that's installed in that closet at the end. And the rest of this loft space will be available as kind of an away space, sort of a library space, maybe a TV space. We'll head now down this hallway into the bedroom, bathroom, laundry area. So this is a, a laundry closet 
for a stacked laundry unit. This is another office space. On the plans, these two spaces that I'm calling his and hers are, um, they're called music spaces. And so the owners are both musicians and they basically wanted to have their own spaces here for office space, um, for making music, for perhaps meditation. So they each have their own spaces, which of course could also be used for guests. Although on the plans, this is the guest bedroom. So we've got a linen closet here on the right across the hallway from the stacked laundry unit. This is the guest bathroom, the more public bathroom here adjacent to the bedroom. And there's actually a plan to bring some natural light in here by installing kind of a, almost a skylight or a solo tube in the ceiling here that will bring in light from the loft area. And here we are going into this guest bedroom which has a door, a door that we saw outside on the entry porch. So no closet because it is a guest bedroom. And then we'll make our way, we'll continue down the hallway to this primary bedroom suite. So this is in the L that kind of plugs on to the main volume. You can see there's vaulted space here in this primary bedroom, light on two sides of the bedroom. And again, you'll notice up high that loft space, which actually wasn't part of the plan. The plan was to run this wall all the way up to the roof to where you see those ceiling boards ending. But again, the, the owners in consultation with the builder decided, you know, that's kind of nice space up there and we could use it as storage space. Uh, so they are going to be finishing the ceiling there. Here you can see the rough in for the wall cassette that's going to be conditioning this end of the house. There's a fun little transom window that's been framed in between the primary bathroom and the bedroom area. This doorway brings us into the closet, big walk-in closet. And you go through the closet into the bathroom. This is a drop-down stair to the storage area that's up above. And this is kind of fun here. They've actually framed this gable vaulted ceiling underneath the main roof panels. Uh, to give this primary bathroom more of a sense of height and spaciousness. And here we have a tub shower unit, and the toilet will go in the corner there. The window looking to the east to get morning light, and then here's where the vanity and the sink will be. We'll take a quick look at this trim detail. Uh, on many of Unity Homes, we've been specifying a corner bead that actually has a 45 degree bevel on it for finishing the windows. And this bead fits into a kerf in the extension jam that we provide as part of the tempo package. And it, it creates a, a 45 degree angle here where the extension jam meets the sheetrock. The company that, that has made that chamfer corner bead is no longer making it, Trimtex, uh, but they do make other profiles. And so in the case of this project, the sheetrocker has installed this quarter round bead to give this nice curved profile to make the transition from the extension jam to the sheetrock. So it's very similar to what we have been calling our type six drywall return detail with the chamfer bead, only in this case, it's a quarter round bead. And so this will get pre-finished wood sills at the bottom of the window and then a little apron piece underneath that wood sill. So pretty much the same as our normal drywall return detail, but just with a slightly different profile used here based on availability. We'll head back now into the main part of the house. So here we are back in the main volume of the house. It's all coming together very nicely. It feels very bright and spacious in here. As soon as the sheetrock taping is finished and a coat of paint gets on the walls, then the finished carpentry will start on the interior and that'll mean installing all of those tempo materials, the flooring, the doors, the cabinets that we've provided as part of the tempo package. And the owners are looking forward to moving into the house later this summer. I hope you've found this little tour helpful and interesting, and perhaps we'll get back here when the house is finished to do another tour and you can compare the, this sheetrock stage with the finished house. This is Andrew Dye signing off for Unity Homes.